There are two types of men in this world, those who embrace muscle mommies, and those who will be embraced by muscle mommies. Hello everyone, Sober Oni of G&A Reviews here, with a spotlight for the servant who's here to remind you to live up to your gym goals, Bargus, aka Tom Lin Gawain. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 4 star servants. So if you'd like to try some of Bargus home cooking, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can help out the channel. And now, on to Gawain's stats. Gawain has a max HP of 13,521, and a max attack of 8,721. Gawain's HP is very high, even among SR Sabres, who are known for having the highest HP stats around. However, as you'd expect, her attack ranks towards the bottom of her class. Similarly, she has a tremendously high HP stat compared to most other 4-star servants, but really below average attack. When it comes to her command cards, Gawain has 5 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.74% and a star rate of 10.2%. Although her NP gain and star generating are not very good, despite those high rates, mostly due to her triple buster card deck. Overall, Gawain, oddly enough, has a very defensive stat spread with low offensive investment despite her buster deck, which is extremely uncommon for a buster gorilla type of servant. Taking a look at her skills, Gawain's first skill is Numeral of the Saint, rank B. This skill increases her attack by 18% for 3 turns, and it'll additionally increase her buster card effectiveness between 18 and 28% for 3 turns if she's on a sunlight battlefield, depending on level. Her second skill is Wild Rule, rank A, which increases her buster card effectiveness for 3 turns between 20 and 30%, depending on level. It also grants her a unique buff for 3 turns that recovers 1000 HP every time she attacks, and removes 1 buff from an enemy every time she attacks, and if she successfully removes a buff, she will inflict defense down 10% on that enemy for 3 turns. And finally, her last skill is Foul Weather Rank A. This skill reduces the damage taken by the party for 3 attacks, between 500 and 1000, and it grants a unique buff that increases the party's NP gauge between 10 and 15% every turn for 3 turns, depending on level. As for her passives, Gawain has Magic Resistance Rank C, which increases her debuff resistance by 15%, and Madness Enhancement rank A+, which increases her buster card effectiveness by 11%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Gawain has a buster deck with Quick Arts, Buster Buster Buster, and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Black Dog Galatine. It's an AoE buster attack that deals damage to all enemies, with a modifier between 300 and 500%, depending on level. It also increases her max HP by 3000 for 5 turns, reduces her cooldowns by 1, and increases her buster card effectiveness between 20 and 40% for a turn, depending on overcharge. If Tristan's job is to rob you of all your stakes, then Gawain is here to leave you bone dry. Because for level ascension, she's going to need 18 bones, 16 medals, 36 chains, and 4 gallstones. While for skill ascension, she will need a further 24 medals, 36 bones, 12 black tallow, and 60 whole bells per skill. Before I go into my analysis, I just want to have a moment of silence for the war crimes that these fairies are committing on everyone's ascension mat stash. So with such a heavy mat investment, is Gawain really worth it? Well, yes and no. Fairy Gawain is a pretty unconventional and tricky servant to talk about, because she doesn't entirely fit the mold of your typical buster gorilla, and a lot of her skills and stats are very odd in both good and bad ways. Starting with her stats, as I mentioned, they are weirdly lopsided toward defense, despite Gawain most definitely being a pure buster DPS. That low attack does hurt her. However, on the bright side, she is packing a huge madness enhancement buff, which significantly bolsters the power of her normal attacks and her double phantasm, so that does balance it out somewhat, and she does rely a lot on her other skills to further enhance her attack. Her first skill, Numeral of the Saint, is a small attack buff that also has the potential to give a big buff to her buster cards if she's on a sunlit battlefield, and when using this skill on a sunlit battlefield, it is phenomenal. It essentially becomes a slightly stronger mana burst that has a really good 3 turn uptime. Now while sunlit battlefields are the most common type, it's still highly situational 
and without the means of setting the sun up herself, the buster buff isn't gonna proc in most battles. Which means that for the most part, this skill is just a really weak personal attack buff that's not even stronger than a standard charisma. To help balance that out though, Gawain does have access to a better buster buff in her second skill, Wild Rule. This is a 30% 3 turn buff that also grants her attacks the unique effect of healing her for 1000 HP and removing a buff from the enemy. It also slaps a 10% defense down on enemies that have their buffs removed. And this is where Gawain shines and separates herself from the standard buster DPS. This is some impressive utility for an offensive servant. Putting in the buster buff aside, which obviously of course is good, being able to remove a buff from an enemy every time you attack is downright broken in some battles. This skill allows Gawain to do things like remove multiple buffs from an enemy in a single turn while also weakening them. It removes things like evade invincibility or even Castoria's true invincibility before she can NP, and it does all kinds of other crazy things. On top of that, it also heals her significantly, which on top of her already high HP, means that she is surprisingly one of the most tanky buster servants around, and can be near unkillable in some stall teams, since this skill combos perfectly well with Merlin's Noble Phantasm. And finally, Gawain has another surprisingly good piece of utility in Foul Weather. This one is a party-wide damage cut and NP battery that charges the party's NP gauge by 15% every turn. The damage cut is surprisingly good, and when combined with her healing from the second skill, Gawain can absolutely tank most non-NP attacks, and not lose a single bit of health. And when combined with defensive buffs from servants like Mosh or Waver, Gawain can even start tanking some NPs. But the NP charge is what really makes this skill so strong. And not even because it just charges Gawain's NP bar, but because it allows the servant servants that support her a continual source of NP battery that can help them with their Noble Phantasm. Again, this skill combos extremely well with Merlin. That's why for skill priority, I actually recommend leveling Foul Weather first just for that NP charge, followed by Wild Rule for the Buster buff, and then Numeral of the Saint since the attack buff doesn't even scale. For her pen skills, you can just pick up mana loading and extra attack damage as usual. Gawain's Noble Phantasm is also another surprisingly unique part of her kit. It's an AoE Buster attack that also increases her max HP by 3000, reduces her skill cooldowns by 1, and increases her buster card effectiveness. Now that's a lot. Offensively, the buster buff is huge. With Wild Rule active, this gives Gawain a 61% buster buff to her Noble Phantasm at just overcharge 1. Remember, she gets a free 11% buster buff from her passive. And on sunlit battlefields, that comes out to an 89% buster buff, which is ridiculously strong. Now combine that with her attack, buff and that means that Gawain can break the 100% bonus damage ceiling all on her own without any help. And that's not even counting any defense downs that she can stack on the enemy. So despite her low attack, she is capable of putting up some high damage numbers in the right situation. But even defensively, this Noble Phantasm helps Gawain by lowering her cooldowns and giving her 3000 HP. This makes her feel very similar to Passion Lip in that she's a buster gorilla who can easily snowball and tank tons of damage because of the heal that's built into her kit. Naturally, this means that Gawain is built for buster stall teams, and that's a niche that we haven't really seen much of recently. Rather than bursting down enemies with crits or looping her Noble Phantasm, Gawain is built for the long run, grindy kind of battles. She can stall out and weaken enemies by consistently removing their buffs, and her healing and defensive buffs let her soak up damage in a way that most glass cannon DPS servants just couldn't even dream of. Her perma buster buff on her Noble Phantasm, and the high up time on her other buffs also makes her damage fairly consistent, so there isn't much of a drop off like you would see from some of the buster crit servants when the battle drags on too long. She also has great synergy with a lot of stally buster supports like Merlin and Nightingale, since she can work as a battery for both of them and also complement their buffs and debuffs. In short, Gawain is a very specific type of buster DPS that is tailor made for challenge quests or tougher story content where buff removal and tankiness is necessary. Conversely, though, that does mean that she lacks the more bursty offensive capabilities of modern servants. She isn't very good at looping her NP, nor does she have any crit buffs or star absorb skills in her kit, so she can't be a crit DPS. So just don't expect her to cleave through break bars with one or two attacks. On that note, Gawain's other major drawback is of course the reliance on sunlight battlefields. She won't be able to access her full damage on her first skill very often, and because she lacks a critical NP interlude, her damage will fall short of the top tier damage dealers in her class. 
Setting up a team for Gawain is very straightforward. Because she's so self-sufficient, she mostly just needs allies who can provide her with some kind of additional NP charge or survivability, like Mosh, Merlin, Ozymandias, and Nightingale. I typically don't mention Merlin because, duh, he's good with every Buster Servant, but in this case, he has particularly strong synergy with Gawain since his Noble Phantasm complements her healing and NP battery perfectly, and they both enable each other. Mosh is the best free-to-play option for her strong defensive buffs and her targetable NP charge, Ozzy can set up Sunlight for Gawain to maximize her damage, and Nightingale just has a ridiculously powerful Buster buff, heal, debuff removal, and the perfect Noble Phantasm for stalling. Gawain's Bond CE is Stomach Destroyer. It increases her NP damage by 30%, and it has a 30% chance to increase her max HP by 500 when attacking. This is a fun craft essence to use for meme teams where you just want to stack HP, but practically speaking, Speaking, you should give Gawain craft essences that boost her buster and NP damage, like Black Grail, Limited Zero, and Aerial Drive. Black Grail is especially strong, since as we established, Gawain has more than enough HP to spare. If you don't have Aerial Drive, then in the future, you should consider picking up Cranking. It's another free CE that has a very similar effect to Aerial Drive, as well as full attack stats. For command codes, I actually love Child of the Snowfield on Gawain, because it gives her one of the only things that she lacks in her kit, which is debuff removal. Plus, it heals her, so it synergizes really well with her tankiness, and it just helps her last longer in fights where enemies can spam debuffs. Overall, Gawain is a very strong servant within her niche. She has consistent, strong damage that helps her continuously chip away at enemies in longer fights without any noticeable drop-off, her utility is top tier for a DPS, and she can hard count her enemies that rely on stacking buffs. That being said though, her niche isn't exactly the most in demand since grindy long battles aren't very common in modern FGO. And while her damage is good, she is lacking in burst, so she can't quickly kill enemies the way that most crit and NP looping buster servants can. With that said, Fairy Gawain gets an A- from me. I think that she is fairly strong, but by no means required, and she definitely only appeals to a specific niche of playstyle that isn't as meta, but she's definitely a servant who's on the cusp of greatness. If she gets an NP interlude or a way to set up sunlight, or if the meta shifts to more long, grindy fights, then she can easily become a top tier servant. And those are my thoughts on Fairy Gawain, but regardless of her meta viability, I think the one thing that should guide all of us in rolling for her are those sweet, sweet muscles. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, and I'll see you all in the next Severn Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.